What are the different types of aphasia? The causes, diagnoses, and treatments of aphasia. One of the most common communication impairments a medical SLP with, will work with is aphasia. Aphasia is a disorder that impacts language expression and or language comprehension. However, aphasia isn't just one simple diagnosis. There are actually six different types of aphasia, and many patients can demonstrate symptoms of more than one type. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the different types of aphasia and what medical SLP should consider when working with this population. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. According to the NIH, aphasia is a disorder that results from damage to portions of the brain that are responsible for language. It can be caused suddenly by a stroke or brain injury or can be a result of a progressive neurological condition. Aphasia not only impacts speech production, but can also impair the understanding of language as well as reading and writing. Aphasia, however, does not impact a person's intelligence or memory. Aphasia is usually grouped into two main categories of fluent and non-fluent aphasia, but today we're going to go a little more in depth about each type. There are seven different classifications, four fluent and three non-fluent of aphasia. Broca's aphasia is a type of non-fluent aphasia and was named after the French scientist Paul Broca, who first discovered the deficits associated with this type of aphasia back in 1861. According to the National Aphasia Association, Broca's aphasia results from an injury to the left hemisphere inferior frontal gyrus, as well as other speech and language areas of the brain. Patients with non-fluent aphasia know what they want to say and can understand others. Their speech may sound effortful and may involve hard and difficult starts and stops. Sentences may also be produced with words out of order or with incorrect syntax or grammar. Transcortical motor aphasia is another type of non-fluent aphasia where the person does understand language. Short phrases, delays, or repetitions may be present. Global aphasia is the third type of non-fluent aphasia. According to the National Aphasia Association, it is the most severe type of aphasia that impacts both the Broca's and Wernicke's areas, and most often the patient is not able to read or write, and can still have normal cognitive ability in areas outside of language. This classification is often given immediately after a stroke or brain injury, and the patient may be reclassified to a different type of aphasia as progress is made. Wernicke's aphasia is also referred to as fluent aphasia, where the patient knows what they want to say, but the words may not make any sense or may not even be real words at all. According to the NIH, patients with Wernicke's aphasia have impaired comprehension of their own speech, may not recognize the errors that they are making. Wernicke's aphasia was named after the German physician who linked the characteristics together for this type of aphasia that impacts the posterior section of the superior temporal gyrus in the dominant cerebral hemisphere. Conduction aphasia is another type of fluent aphasia where language is understood, but the person with aphasia may have trouble with repetition and word finding. Anomic aphasia is a more mild form of aphasia where the patient has difficulty with naming or word finding and may use vague or filler words to describe the target words. Transcortical sensory aphasia is the last type of fluent aphasia where it's similar to Wernicke's aphasia and that the person may use sentences that have no meaning. But unlike Wernicke's aphasia, the patient may be able to repeat words. I remember in grad school really having no interest in working with adults with speech impairments. I was solely focused on working with kids. I originally was so uninterested in my aphasia course until we were watching videos and had to list different characteristics of the patient's presentation to help with a differential diagnosis of either Wernicke's or Broca's. I remember being so fascinated by the presentation of each patient and how what we do as SLPs helps to diagnose and treat those specific impairments. Now that we've covered all of the various types of aphasia, there are several assessments for aphasia that are available for purchase or free download. It is vital to note the fact that the case history, the getting to know you piece, is far more important than any form of testing. So be sure to really plan some time to spend on that. Some of these assessments can be very long and tedious to administer depending on the assessment and patient severity and tolerance. It's important to know whether the entire evaluation needs to be administered or if certain subtests will suffice depending on the patient's payer source and your course of treatment. A few comprehensive assessments for purchase include 
the Western aphasia battery, the aphasia diagnostic profiles, the Boston Diagnostic Aphasia Evaluation, and the Assessment for Living with Aphasia Toolkit. So a few that are freely available are the Quick Aphasia Battery, the Brisbane Test for Acute Aphasia, and the Aphasia Pathway also provides a summary of dis different assessment approaches that we will link in the description below. One of the most impactful patients that I saw in the clinic during grad school came in with Broca's aphasia. I remember finding his impairment so interesting and he was so frustrated that his stroke left him with these deficits. I remember administering the Boston Diagnostic Aphasia Evaluation to him and some of the subtests were so difficult for him that he became really emotional. He used to be very high in the military and wasn't able to go back to work until he could communicate more effectively. I remember asking my supervisor if we really had to go through each and every subtest because it was really emotionally draining on him. We were able to get his payer source to accept a few subtests, which I was so grateful for because it was really emotionally draining. This patient worked so hard during our sessions and I studied so much about different treatment strategies for patients with aphasia. I'm so grateful for my experiences with him because I became so passionate about the profound impact that our field really has on patients' everyday lives to eat and speak like their prior level of functioning. Now, after completing formal or informal assessments, we'll discuss a few structured approaches to address specific deficits. This list is by no means exhaustive, but just wanted to provide you with some different treatment options for you to further explore. The first approach I want to discuss is LPAA, which is the Life Participation Approach to Aphasia. This is a patient-driven service model that focuses on supporting long-term life goals for people with aphasia, from Chappie et al. in 2000. SLPs are encouraged to not only target communication impairments, but also set goals to establish strong relationships and a safe environment for persons with aphasia. Supported Conversation Approach, SCA, uses a combination of strategies such as writing, drawing, and pictographs to facilitate communication between persons with aphasia and conversation partners. This approach should be provided to all clients and families in order to prioritize means of communicating with the individual. Copy and Recall Therapy, CART, improves single word writing in aphasia. This approach has also been applied to retraining text messaging. This is Beeson et al. 2002 and 2013. Melodic Intonation Therapy, MIT, improves speech fluency in individuals with non-fluent aphasia. It's Norton et al. in 2009. Semantic Feature Analysis, SFA, is thought to strengthen semantic networks. This is a treatment approach to improve naming and word finding and can be used to teach circumlocution. Phonological Component Analysis, PCA, this is similar to SFA, PCA targets naming abilities by focusing on the phonological components of words. This is Leonard et al. in 2008. VNEST, Verb Network Strengthening Treatment, targets lexical retrieval in the context of sentences. For example, a person with aphasia is given a verb and is asked to create simple sentences when provided a subject and direct object. This is Edmonds et al. in 2009. Communication-based treatments focus on facilitating communication through a variety of means. Examples of communication-based impairments include PACE, promoting aphasic's communicative effectiveness. Focuses on the person with aphasia and conversation partner engaging new information with whatever means is successful, such as writing, verbal communication, gesturing, and drawing. This is Davis, 2005. Script training uses custom scripts to improve everyday communication in persons with aphasia. K. and Cherney, 2016. Response elaboration training, RET, targets topic elaboration to increase verbal output. That's Wamba and Martinez in 2000. Again, this is just a very short list of evidence-based treatment strategies for your patients with aphasia to check out. Again, it's so important to involve the patient in these treatment planning sessions to ensure that the targeted treatment and goals are most important to the patient. I remember working with a patient a few years into my career in a nursing home that had some really interesting impairments following his stroke. I thought as a good SLP, I'll do a comprehensive assessment and come up with a treatment plan based on his deficits. After discussing the results of the assessment and what I thought would be the best treatment options, he let me know that most of his impairments don't matter to him and he wanted to work on other strategies that I hadn't even considered. I'm so glad that he spoke up and told me these things or else I'm sure we wouldn't have had a very productive sessions. He taught me so much and made incredible progress and I'm grateful for learning those lessons early on. 
I'm so glad to see that aphasia therapy is now becoming more person-centered as opposed to strictly impairment-based. We have a free resource for you from the MedSLP Collective on the life participation approach to aphasia. We'll link it in the description below. And if you're interested in learning more about the MedSLP Collective, you could go to www.medslpcollective.com.